CataractCoach.com. Bad incisions lead to trouble. Now what? We've got an anonymous resident who's operating and sharing this case with us. So here comes the incision. Watch carefully. It's a little too peripheral, so you get a little bit of conjunctival bleeding. And the angle is going to be too steep, so the incision will be very short. And you're already committed. You've already entered the anterior chamber. Nothing you can do now but to proceed. So there's the bleeding from the conjunctiva. Caps rex is being created. That goes very well. But look at the prolapse of the incision. Now, this is also a tough case. The patient's hyperopic and has Flomax issues, so floppy iris syndrome. But that incision is going to be difficult. It'll be a huge problem to operate through that incision for the whole case. Look at that iris prolapse. So what's the best move here? Well, we sped up the video because I want to show you that the best move here is not to continue through that incision. That incision needs to be closed, quite frankly. So now the resident is going to get a 10 nylon suture and place it in here to completely seal that temporal incision. That part is over. So taking your time, passing the suture, making sure it's a nice, good bite, good grab of tissue on both sides of the incision. That suture can then be cut and then tied, and we need to make a new incision. So that's a very important lesson. In cataract surgery, every step builds on the previous. A terrible incision means the whole case is going to suffer. So what you should do in a case like this, abandon that first incision. It's okay. Suture it up, close it completely, and then make a new incision. And you can also tell by the suturing technique here, even sped up, the resident is obviously early in the learning curve. Now, moving to the superior position. Now the surgeon is sitting superiorly, and now a better incision can be made there. So this is an important lesson. Abandon the first incision. It's too damaged, too leaky, and continue. Here's the end of the case. Iowa goes in the capsule bag. Viscolats removed with the IA probe, and the incision can be sealed up. Now look, even more iris prolapse. So this is an eye prolapsing again. So you can't overly pressurize this eye. Go back in the eye, get sweep the iris back into position, make sure the incisions are hydrated and sealed, and don't hesitate. If you need to, put another suture in. Not a big deal. You don't want the incisions to leak at all, and you certainly don't want iris prolapse. So you see there's a little bit of a, ble a bleed that went in the anterior chamber of the eye. And so that one suture is going to be replaced. And this patient will do fine. Now you look at the OR table and you see that pupil looks a little irregular. Has the temporal iris been damaged too much from that repeated prolapse? And so that's a very important question. And in a case like this, it's actually not damaged. So you see the resident is now throwing a 10 nylon again to do a better job of sealing that incision. Remember, if you take a, your time and do another stitch on the day of surgery, at the original surgery, that's normal. But if you have to come back the day after, that's a return trip to the operating room, that's a complication. So you want to take your time, do good sutures, and if you need to, put an extra suture, replace a suture, whatever it takes. So tying this up now, and it can be cut, and then it'll be rotated into the cornea. Now let's try get an anterior chamber that's pressurized again, and now that works. Here's post-op day one. You see the sutures in the original incision. Pupil is back to a normal shape. The second incision ended up being self-sealing. Little bit of haze in the anterior chamber because of a little bit of bleeding. That suture will remain for about a month, and the patient will do great. It can be removed after that time. Check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. So much great material. You can learn from these cases instead of suffering on your own. Check it out.